Okay, so you mentioned Gallipoli, and uh, you know we, we sometimes forget because of all the concentration on the trench warfare in, in France and and, uh, and Belgium that it is a world war. It's the first world war, and Gallipoli is very important in that. Mm. Yes. Um, Gallipoli is a, a, a project to try and break the deadlock on the Western Front. Um, uh, by 1915, uh, you've got these rules of trenches from the Channel to Switzerland, and it's a, it's a war of attrition, and it's sort of stalemate. And so they begin to look around and say, well, how can we do? Can we knock out the props round the side, you know, go to some sideshow? And Turkey came into the war in the autumn of 1914, and the, um, uh, Winston Churchill uh, uh, um, invents this wonderful scheme uh, to break through uh, to Constantinople to Istanbul as it is now, into the Black Sea, and this would knock Turkey out of the war. It would enable supplies to be sent to Russia, our ally in the east, uh, and it would transform the whole situation. Um, it goes badly wrong. It isn't actually technically feasible. I mean, there are all sorts of reasons why. I mean, amphibious landings, the, you know, it's not like D-Day. Um, uh, these are amateurs. Uh, but, uh, of course, at tremendous cost. And there are Irish troops involved in Gallipoli from the very beginning. There are regular troops from the Dublins and the Munsters who land uh, uh, with terrible casualties uh, at a place called Cape Hellas at V Beach um, in April 1915. Um, uh, and that's the first sign back home that this is very serious exercise. And then a few months later when they're trying to have a, uh, another p push at Gallipoli at a place called Suvla Bay, they send the 10th Irish Division. And this is the first of the Kitchener divisions to have been raised in Ireland. It's the keenest soldiers and they get sent out there and again it goes badly wrong and they, uh, they languish um, uh, to no great effect uh, uh, at Gallipoli.